We start with Gold Star wife Jane Horton, a former senior Defense Department official. Jane lost her husband, Christopher, to fighting in Afghanistan in 2011. And Texas Congressman, he is a Navy veteran. He's Dr. Ronnie Jackson from House Armed Services and Foreign Affairs. Congressman, we've got to start with you. We've got to get to this story. The NSA, Jane, we're going to talk to you in just a second. NSA uh, Jake Sullivan blasted for dubious comments today, claiming the Biden administration had planned for all contingencies. The president yesterday admitted they weren't ready. And both Jen Psaki and NSA Sullivan saying basically that they don't have any idea of how many Americans they need to evacuate. Your, your reaction to that? Well, the whole thing's embarrassing. It's shameful. And obviously, they didn't prepare for all contingencies. I heard them say that as well yesterday. I heard the president say that as well. If that's the case, then was this one of the contingencies they prepared for? Did they plan to have a, a, C, a C-17 taxiing down the runway and taking off with hundreds of people hanging onto the aircraft? This is absolutely embarrassing. They've, they've created the absolute worst outcome here because of their lack of a contingency. They obviously did not plan for this. They've put thousands of lives in danger, including thousands of American citizens that are trapped outside the perimeter that's controlled by the Taliban. And I have no confidence whatsoever the Taliban is going to expedite or allow these people to cross through the perimeter and get to the airfield so they can be evacuated. Yes, so I dangerous. think we're, we're in trouble. You know, the president is returning to the White House tonight at 8.40 p.m. from Camp David. You know, Jane, thanks for joining us. We're so sorry about your loss. Uh, you've in endured a terrible tragedy like so many Gold Star families. National security experts say it didn't have to be this way. It wasn't inevitable. This could have been Biden's Dunkirk moment rescuing our partners in Afghanistan. Now overwhelming scenes of bedlam. The Taliban today shooting at people at Kabul airport. It's being called Biden's Bay of Pigs moment, his Saigon moment, his Carter Iran moment. What do you think? You know, this is Jane, completely horrifying for me as a gold star wife and as an American citizen. Um, my heart goes out to all the people on the ground, to our troops on the ground that are on their, you know, how many number deployment. You have some people on the ground that are on deployment number 10, some on number 19. Um, you know, we as a country, this is what happens when we are a broken nation, when we don't pay attention to the policies that our government makes, when we don't pay attention to the all-volunteer troops on the ground that have volunteered to fight, bleed, and die for us. And we owe them better. We owe them better policies. And instead of blaming each other right now, we need to come together as a country and see how we can move forward and what we could do to fix this situation. Yeah, that's a good point. Congressman, what Jane just said, you know, the mistakes have been made. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said we would never have begun to withdraw our military first with so many American civilians still left behind, up to 40,000, the estimates show. Polls are going against the president right now. Uh, what is your take on the president and the administration moving to do this before the 20th anniversary of 9-11? That seems fatally naive. What do you think of that? Well, absolutely. And, and what kind of image is this going to create? You know, on the anniversary, on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, what are we going to see? We're going to see the Taliban flag flying over the embassy in Kabul. That sends a horrible, horrible message to our allies and to our adversaries. And it really diminishes our capability to be a leader in uh, among the communities out there in the world community. And so it's done great damage to our reputation. Uh, our allies won't trust us in the future. Our enemies are going to be emboldened and they're going to test us. And I think that we have many more bad days to come as a direct result of some of the decisions that were made here in the debacle that we're seeing play out on TV today. Jane, uh, the U.N. ambassador from Afghanistan told the U.N. a couple of weeks ago that al Qaeda, ISIS are among 20 terror groups now inside Afghanistan. 5,500 terror attacks since April. Thousands have been killed. Your reaction to that report? We're seeing women being pushed back to the seventh century in Afghanistan, forced marriages with teenagers, too, with Talibanis, uh, terrorists. What do you say to all of that? You know, it's horrifying again. I've been hearing from people on the ground. I was just in Afghanistan in June, went over their commercial airlines to go be with the Afghan people. And we have to do better as a nation. This is time to get to work as a nation for our future. We have to learn from our mistakes, figure out what went wrong and how we're going to go forward, get our people off the ground. And yeah, it's horrifying to know that there's terrorist groups on the ground and the Afghan people deserve better than this as well. We are better as America. You know, and all the thought leader. Go ahead, me. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Um, 
just that we have got to get work and we have to do better. Again, I'm seeing a lot of blaming, but I want to see action. I want to see what we're going to do next. I want to make sure we learn from this and that more service members aren't put in a situation like my husband where he's attached to something like this because there's better for our country. People have given so much and we have we got to you. do something for our hearts, which is America. We hear the emotion in your voice, Jane. You're, you're upset right now about what you're saying, right? Of course I'm upset. It's horrifying. You know, I, I haven't slept in four days. I finally slept last night. I've been on the phone with over 400 calls yesterday from service members trying to get their translators out. This is, you know, this isn't red or blue. This is something as a country that we have got to fix. And if we don't start looking at us as a holistic country, we're never going to fix it. And so, you know, yeah. when I lost my husband, I started investing in the military community and the Afghan people. And my community of military is completely broken. That You know, the Afghan people are in shambles right now. Their hearts are broken. And all I have left is my country. And I don't want to see it so divided because all we have is each other. And I don't care what you think. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. You are my people. And we will come together as a nation. We will learn from this and we will do better. You know, people would say that's exactly the message we need to hear now, Congressman, uh, you know, in order to come together so we can stop getting distracted with division and, and you know, disunity. It's also it's to, in order to come together to avoid the mistakes. We had NSA Sullivan today. He wouldn't answer why Biden reportedly ignored generals and intelligence report. Why did the U.S. give up Bagram Air Force Base to the Taliban? Um, you know, he, the NSA Sullivan, he admitted the Taliban has, quote, a fair amount of our military hardware. We're talking guns, ammunition, helicopters. Listen to this from the Pentagon pressure presser yesterday. Watch this. So there's no, no U.S. actions being taken to prevent equipment from falling into the hands of the Taliban by destroying it or anything else? I don't have the, that answer to that question. What do you think? Look, I agree with Ms. Horton. We, we, we need to get past the blame eventually, but we do have to find out exactly why this happened. And I hope in the House that we have hearings and we bring these people in and we figure out what information was passed to the president. And did he not get the information? Did he ignore the information? Uh, who dropped the ball? And I think there should need to be some people that need to be held responsible and move on because we've obviously got, obviously got some people in these in certain roles that are incapable of, 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 you know, of doing their job because they let this happen. So we need to figure out what's happening. We need to refocus. We need to keep our eye on the ball. You know, in the Foreign Affairs Committee and Armed Services for months now, ever since I've been in Congress on January 3rd, we've not addressed issues like this. We've talked about other things. We've been talking about gender nomenclature, transgenders. We've been talking about white supremacy and, uh, you know, and extremism in the military and critical race theory and all these other issues. And we haven't been talking about issues that are important to us as a, a, for our national security. And we've got to get back. We've got to protect this nation first and foremost. And we have to come together as Democrats and as Republicans. And we have to take our national security seriously. Okay, we hear you loud and clear. Uh, Democrat Senator J uh, Jack Reed of uh, Armed Services, he's uh, going to, he's talking about launching hearings, hearings after we evacuate our, uh, our Americans. Um, you know, reports coming in that, you know, this was a fast, of course, a fast Taliban takeover that the Biden administration didn't see coming. That's the question. Even last month, Jane, you know, the president was putting out statements this would not be like the fall of Saigon when it did turn into that. You know, he's been criticized in the past, though. He's been vice president for eight years, Senate Foreign Relations as a senator um, in the, in the, during this 20 year fight in Afghanistan. You remember, uh, President Obama said he uh, Biden opposed the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. Um, so this is about who is leading us and whether or not they are acting on the intelligence they get. Right, Jane? I think that there's, you know, I'm not going to play the blame game. I can't. Um, what's little of my heart cannot play that game right now. Um, but there's multiple administrations that have been involved in this. You know, there's incredibly painful conversations that are happening now. And I ask the American people, you know, this is what happens again when we are divided and also when we don't pay attention to what's going on in the country. And I've noticed it for years. I get asked all the time, we're still in Afghanistan, what's going on over there? And it breaks my heart, you know, because you have men and women that are going over there, leaving their families, people that are dying, little babies that are being left behind, little girls that lost their dad. And we've got to start paying attention because our government represents us, whether we like that or not. And so... That's the message yeah, we I hear you. 
It's an important message. Congressman, final word on this. Why the intelligence failures? Why? I don't know. We need to get to the we need to get to the bottom of that. I don't know if there were uh, intelligence failures. The intelligence wasn't produced. Uh, but you know, we've been around for a long time. We've been in Afghanistan for 20 years. We should have known this. There, there are a lot of simple problems happen here. I mean, we we should not have had one way out of the country before we got everybody out. We should have kept a presence in Bagram. We should have maintained that airfield, and we should have got people uh, slowly over to Bagram and got American citizens and the Afghan interpreters and everybody else that we needed to get out of there. We should have started that process, and that should have drug out for a long time until we were all clear before we created this situation here. Now we're in a really bad spot where we don't have a lot of good answers right now because we have the Got Taliban it. controlling the perimeter. And I don't know that we can get these people in in time. I hope we can. I pray that we can. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your insights, Jane Horton and Congressman Ronnie Jackson. We really appreciate you coming on and for your service to our country. It's good to have you both on. We'll, we'll have you back on again soon.